children of Captivate. We'll talk to you more about how that works. But for now, I'll suffice it to say, uh, you can kind of think of, of this as a future direction where Captivate is headed. Now, what you're seeing there on the interface, actually, is the Captivate authoring layout space. And it probably feels pretty familiar to you. There are thumbnails on the left-hand side representing multiple slides. There's a stage in the center representing your working space. And on the right-hand side, there's a property inspector that changes dynamically depending on what you've selected. Same as previous versions, you're gonna find that there's a timeline at the bottom of that design space. There's some new icons on the left-hand side and some new icons on the right-hand side, all of which are incredibly fabulously useful. But what I want you to notice is, we have implemented a completely transformative design. Overall, the aesthetic is now incredibly clean and simple, easy to use, straightforward and direct. What do you guys think? <laughs> nice, beautiful stuff. So I thought a good way to explain this would be to just make a project, right? Now this is a project which, like many others, is gonna be drawn from a template or a core piece inside of a Project Charm. So there will be hundreds of these kinds of pre-built projects. Now unlike pre-built projects that you may have seen in the past, these will not be lorem ipsum slides with layouts. These will be actual pre-built projects meant to align the kinds of projects that we know that you're building in your workplace. They are designed to give you a boost. So if you've got that person in your office who's never created a basic onboarding or a safety course or something like that, you will actually find examples right there that they can use as starters to kickstart. That doesn't mean that you can't start from nothing. It just means we want to give you all the assistance we can to get you started. Now, everything about Project Charm thinks in terms of responsive out of the gate. So you do not have to worry about is it breakpoint or is it fluid box or is it or do I have to spend 20 hours making it mobile? It's simply going to make itself mobile for you. Okay? That is that is a big thing. Exactly. Exactly. And at the same time, the most important thing I want you to carry away from this is that we are aware that Captivate today is the most powerful option for building your e-learning courses. We have no interest in taking away any power. Our intent is to make it easy, fast, work for every member of your team, no matter their experience, but not give up on the power that you need for those heavy lifting courses. Okay, everybody follow? Does it sound good to you? Excellent, all right. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and ask Shamba to open a, this project, right? And he'll launch it from a launch page, drawing from one of the templates. And as we go into this project, is gonna replace that background image. Please do, Shamba, because that teal is awful. Yes, thank you. Okay, so obviously you can easily quickly replace images by simply clicking on the icon in the panel in order to swap that image out. Likewise, you can do things like replace the text. So for example, if we didn't want to call this onboarding for hospitality and tourism, we could call it something cool, like um, customer is always right, or something like that. And that can simply be the way that you enter your text. You can grab this from a storyboard in PowerPoint or Word or wherever you happen to have it, and simply paste it in to the interface. To edit any of these components, you simply click on them and then modify them. Now notice over on the right hand side there that you're seeing a number of what are called design options. These are pre-built font and other layout options that are relevant to the thing you have selected at this moment. And that will make it easy for you to be able to quickly and easily modify and save those modifications so that you can quickly apply the different kinds of styles that you have across your project. Now here on the second page, we've got an interesting component. And this is another way to think of Project Charm, is that it's composed of these different components. Think of them as stacks across the page from top to bottom. So that middle component is actually three images that are being used as buttons. Now Project Charm is basically agnostic to the idea of interaction. So if it's there, it can be interactive. And that's the case with these images here. Now in this case, we have these images on a component that's set up to have multiple elements inside of it. 
So if we look at the design for that component, you'll see that Shambhu could easily change the number of images from three to five and back and forth again. He can change the styles of the design overall just by clicking these little buttons. He can very quickly jump through a bunch of preset layouts that are defined for him. He also, of course, can go back and start with that component from scratch and format it his own way. But he has those design styles to mean that he doesn't have to spend a bunch of time wasted kind of figuring out exactly where everything is. Okay, now if we look at a slide like this, I think immediately of forced navigation. So if this were forced navigation, I would not want that jump to assessment yellow button to be available at the beginning of the project, right? So we would want to change that so that it, by default, goes away. So Shabu is going to open up the Interactions panel, which is on the right-hand side. Notice the menu on the right-hand side over there. And you can see that there's the panel for Properties at the top, Interactions just below it, then Animation, Audio, and what's that last one, Shabu? That's the symbol. Looks like a dancing... Variable. What? Variable. It's a variable. It looks like a dancing man, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. Um, and so, uh, he's got those pieces, he's selected the Jump to Assessment button, right? Now he's opening up the Interactions panel, and there, he wants to enable, or disable, that button at the beginning of the slot. So he can simply go to find the action associated with entering the slide, the On Enter Slide button, and he can then set, or disable, this particular piece at that moment in time. So it's very swift and easy for him to do this. Now, you may be thinking in your brain, wait a minute, how do I do this in Captivate today? Just imagine the advanced actions dialog in your head, right? This is all just triggers, action assignment, and so on. Can you still do complex assignments and variables? And pro yes, you can, but we've eased it up so that it's much simpler. So now the junior and mid-level people on your team can do this. You don't have to hire just experts to do every kind of interaction. What do you guys think? Okay. So now, in addition to that, Shamba would also want to make this interaction so that as we select any one of these images, it changes, right? We want to know the visited state, and we want to know the hover state, and so on. So he can select any one of those images, and then he can immediately see that he has access to, say, on-click event in the interaction, that he can then, from the on-click event, actually structure it so that it will jump to a different page or something like that, right? So he's, of course, swift as lightning, and he's setting up that interaction right now. And once he's set up that interaction the way that he likes it, he can then right-click on that particular element, the interactive, and choose Copy Interaction. And then he can click on the other ones and choose Paste Interaction. So that you don't have to write that interaction over and over again. You can just copy-paste it across all of those pieces. What do you think? Very cool, right? Very cool. Okay, excellent. Now you may notice at the top of this screen that there are three buttons. There's a desktop button, there's a button for tablet, and there's a button for phone. If Shambhu were to switch to, for example, the tablet version, instantly in the interface, you'll see the change in the layout exactly as it will appear in the browser. Hallelujah, yeah? Right? Okay. In addition to that, if you were to click on the phone, you would see the interfaces would appear inside of the phone. And if he were to click on the phone one more time, then you'll see the interface as it would appear on the phone in the landscape view. So you get all of the different array of mobile options, you can see them all in the authoring interface, and now we can see as we go to the published version that you can see them as well in the published version in the preview mode. So here we're looking at it in preview mode. Now I want to point out one little thing. Did you notice that when Shambo just hit preview, <coughs> did you notice anything strange about what happened? Anybody catch it? Where did it go? It went to the browser, but what page did it go to? It went to the page you're working on, right? So the new solution actually is so intelligent that it knows exactly where you are. It minimizes the amount of uh, material that has to be updated. So if you've done a few tweaks here and there, it doesn't republish the whole project. It just republishes what's necessary to make the, the difference between the two. And that makes publishing with this solution insanely fast. Those of you who go to the test kitchen, I really encourage you to check this out. Not only is it insanely fast, but it's also intuitive. 
it observes where you are in the project and then runs to the preview on that page. Now you might be thinking, oh, but Alan, that means that what if I wanna go see page one or page 10? It's all good, it published the whole thing. It just, for your convenience, is showing you the preview exactly the way you want it. What do you think? Yeah, and there are design innovations like that throughout. So quickly, I'm gonna ask Chambu to just select this, this image of the woman who's working the counter. Now he's double clicked on that image. Did you notice what happened? That's the entire image. The whole source image. How many times have you fussed and beaten and cropped and, and gone back and forth between graphic software to try and figure out how to get exactly the layout you want? See, Jumbo can click that thing, double click it, and he can move it, he can crop it, he can change it, he can scale it, he can move it around, and then when he clicks again, the image is simply gonna pop back into its container. So it's much, much quicker and easier for you to make adjustments. In addition to that, if we were to look at the properties of that image over in the property inspector, uh, we would see that there are filters, Photoshop filters, built right in. So he can simply click to change it to a grayscale version or a dim down version or a blur version and so on. So fantastic. Yeah, you like this one? I like this one very much. Excellent. So then, Shambu, um, let's jump to this one. Excellent. Yes, yes. So this, this page, features the timeline, right? Now, think about the timeline. How many of you played with interactions in video in Captivate, where you've created bookmarks, right? How much do you love bookmarks? How much do you wish that bookmarks could be everywhere? Exactly, and that's what they are in Project Chart. So you can see, even though this is not a video, this is any particular kind of content, there in the timeline, you'll see bookmarks. Shamu can add as many bookmarks as he wants. And let's take that one step further. How many times have you wished that you could simply trigger an action based on the timeline? Anybody? Yes! And that's how it works in Project Charm. So you can trigger actions based on any of those bookmarks that exist inside the timeline, and then those actions can do subsequent things. So for example, if Shambu were to set this up to trigger an action based on something that happened there on the text message or something, uh, he can simply change the state of that object, for example, based on that timeline trick. Fantastic, fantastic. What do you guys think? I love that one. Excellent. Okay, Shambu, let's go down here, and let's actually, let's skip this one and go to the next. I wanna quickly show an example of this, okay. Now, you might be thinking, okay, but that is not everything that I need. I need all kinds of components and fun widgets. We've got those for you too. So if, for example, you just wanted to create a new slide, like this blank slide, you go up to the top left, you use that familiar plus symbol to grab the images of all the different slides that you could have. And you insert from the menu a choice of whatever slide you want. Now, once you've got that slide insert, you can then insert from a set of widgets. And that widget set will continue to grow every quarter, quarter on quarter, into the foreseeable future. The widget that we're showing you here today is tabs. Notice that what Shambu can do is apply those design styles to the tab instantly to change the layout and its style. You can also select any object in it and change what it says, what it looks, its appearance, all that kind of stuff. And you can also change the number of tabs. So here at Shambu, we should have six tabs on this. Boom, we have six tabs. Okay, so you can simply change it, modify it to fit the exact expectations that you have for your particular project. Now, if we jump one forward, I'll show you quick. Uh, I want to show you what the quizzes looks like. Yeah. The quizzes have been completely re-engineered, as you may well imagine. These quizzes are now sensitive to whatever kind of text you enter. So I know a big one for everyone is, can I keep typing an endless, endless answer and still have all the text adjust? It does so automatically now. If you're in Test Kitchen, I encourage you to check all of that out. We also have integrated multiple designs that allow you to quickly format really cool, kind of modern looking designs for your quizzes. And we finally dealt with that madness with all of the feedback bubbles, right? So the feedback bubbles are now consistently implemented across the solution that will give you just these beautiful, beautiful feedback bubbles. And you can still uh, color them, change them, style them, however you want them to be. Uh, and then finally, I want to show you this last piece, because this page, this page is confusing, Shambu. Can you preview this last page for us? Yeah, I just preview that. Okay, so here we are, and this is the last page. But Shambu, it kind of looks like the only way to navigate on that last page would be, you know, to navigate using um, uh, 
uh, using this this custom bar on the bottom. Is that true? I mean, what when we look at this this page, it seems like it's not like a typical captivate. Like, where's the where's the buttons and stuff? Wait, they're all hidden. They're all hidden. If we look very closely, you can see, and Shamu is cheating. It scrolls. Keep scrolling, Shamu. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. That deserves applause, yeah? No longer can a box contain your e-learning projects. You can build that project in a vertical fashion as far as you want. And even if you wanted to show this to your viewers in a mobile phone and so on, it would simply reformat and allow for virtually infinite scrolling to continue on down. So that is, I think, one of the most exciting pieces. You're able to build these sort of web-like components just as easily as you build all of your other elements and interactions. Uh, it is super exciting. I hope that you all will join us in the test kitchen and check it out, assuming you reserved a seat. Now, I know that we're running behind. I apologize. We got a little carried away. Um, I do know that we also need to just make a couple of final announcements to make sure that everybody knows what they need to know. It's now time to take a quick break. Do check out the Adobe and Partner booths in the exhibit area to learn more about the products and use cases and implementation challenges that you can overcome very easily. You can also walk over to the Trust Radius booth where you can leave a review of your experience with Adobe Learning Manager or Project Charm and win prizes for that. Uh, please remember to share feedback at the end of the event on the sessions. The design thinking track is happening in this room. If you are in that track, you will get a number on the back of a tag. That number matches a table somewhere in this room. So please check the number for design thinking track afterward. I look forward to seeing all of you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, everybody.